Hello, everyone. So today I'm joined with Dan Murphy, who is the director at marketing at Privy. And Privy is the number one reviewed sales app in the Shopify app store that helps small brands sell more online. They're one of the fastest growing companies in the US and in 2019 grew from uh, $4 million to $8 million in revenue. They have over 500,000 customers who they've helped generate over $3 billion in revenue. So some pretty awesome numbers there. Dan, I'm really excited to have you here today. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here as well. Awesome. So today we're going to talk specifically about how Privy have grown organic traffic 50% in the last six months by investing in brand using one simple strategy. I love the like, naming that you came up for the episode there. <laughs> like, great copywriting. Good. Right? So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> we'll jump into that in a sec. But first, I know I gave like a pretty top level overview of of Privy, but maybe you could tell us a little bit more about, I'm interested in knowing what the marketing team looks like at Privy. I know there's some familiar faces, a lot of people in the kind of B2B SaaS world will know. So yeah, give us a quick insight as to how things look at Privy since you joined the the team and, and what the team looks like. I think that'd be interesting. Sure. Yeah. It's a relatively new marketing team. In fact, we all, everybody on the marketing team right now started this year. So we're actually a brand new team. The company's been around for a while. And there was a transition going from the early stage. We actually just, I just went through this with Drift, where you go from the old guard to the new guard. You have a change in a uh, team based on you're just de- dealing with different problems. You're at a different scale as a business. And so it's a brand new team. We're led by Dave Gearhart. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of him before, but he's, he's a great CMO. I've worked with him at, at Drift before. We've worked together for about three years now. And I joined him and we have, I think, a, I think we now have a seven person marketing team which is like that perfect size that we have. I, I, I mean, I'll just say, I think we have the best pound for pound marketing team out there right now. I know there's plenty of marketing teams out there that are killer. I just feel so confident in our team. I think we have such a great uh, chemistry and everyone is just so incredibly talented. But we're like that perfect size where it's like everybody can work together. There's really good chemistry. There's not so much process and there's not so much individual ownership that like things slip and that there's miscommunications and stuff like that. There's a lot of just what I would call just playing jazz where we're like picking up instruments and just working, feeling the music sort of and playing hopefully a good tune. So the team is uh, divided into two parts. So I run the brand and product marketing side. uh, And then my counterpart, Ryan, runs the demand gen side. And so we have someone, basically two people running demand gen. And then on my side, there's uh, content, uh, product marketing, and creative. So we have a designer, we have a product marketer, and then we have someone that's running our our content for the the team. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. And I'm I'm interested to know, I don't know if you can share any like specifics around this or not, so it's fine if you can't, but like a tool like Privy, where I know you guys, as we said earlier on, the number one reviewed sales app in the Shopify app store, I'm assuming that a lot of the kind of sign up flow and traffic will come from the Shopify app store too. Yeah. Like what's the rest of the breakdown? Like where's your, I know obviously your leading brand and we're going to talk about that in a, in a little bit and organic content and yeah. traffic, how that's growing. Yeah. But roughly on a top level, like where do, where do the leads and the awareness for Privy come from? What's the kind of split look like? Because I think it might be slightly different to a more typical, let's say B2B SaaS platform that we yeah. have. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, good guess. Shopify is a huge driver, specifically their app store, we have, I think, just under 25,000 reviews on the Shopify app store, which is double the amount of the next most reviewed sales app on the app store. And I think I I haven't gone in crazy detail searching for this, but I think we're probably one of the highest reviewed overall apps across the entire Shopify app store. We've been around for a while and we provide a, a pretty simple, straightforward solution that works. And of course we have, I think of those 25,000, 18,000 are five-star reviews. Yeah, we, we've been there for a while. It's a huge driver of our trials every month. It, it is the majority are coming from the app store. And so we've, one of the things actually we've done this year consciously is position ourselves more around Shopify and an extension, really the, the marketing, the e-commerce marketing that you need for your Shopify store. You know, we've seen, we have this huge part of our business coming from Shopify that's using it. You know, no surprise, Shopify is huge. They're $140 billion market cap, whatever they are today. I don't know. That was last week. Maybe they're a $170 billion market cap company this week. They're huge. They saw this crazy spike in, in new stores set up. I think it was 70% between between Q1 and Q2 this year, 70% jump in new stores created on their platform in one quarter. 
And they were already huge and massive. So yeah, we see a huge part of our business there. And we were fortunate enough to partner with them early to become one of the leading marketing apps for them. And so yeah, a majority of our, our trials come from them. And then now we've actually, one of the things we've done this year is consciously branded and positioned our product around, we are part of that Shopify ecosystem. If you're building a store of Shopify, you can grow your store with Ribby. Awesome. Yeah. So let's get to talking about brand and organic traffic as well off the back of that, because obviously with um, you and Dave coming from backgrounds at Drift, like everyone knows in the B2B SaaS world, how Drift does and did such an incredible job with their marketing and their, and their brand building. It's like in uh, whenever we talk to anyone about marketing within SaaS, Drift is always like the kind of case study that people always look at. Right? I, I was listening to the episode, yeah, this morning with... Um... Uh, Raygun, I think, and, and you guys were talking about Drift, which is awesome. There, I didn't mean, I didn't know you guys were going to mention Drift in that episode, but I was listening to it, and I, I, you guys were talking about it, which is awesome. Yeah, I feel like it comes up a lot because, like, I interviewed also one of the first or early episodes that we did. I interviewed, I don't know if you ever worked with him, but Bill King on yeah. the team. Oh yeah, I know Bill. I actually had a, I talked to Bill yesterday. Actually, yeah, oh. he's a great guy. He's, he's super smart, SEO mind. One of the the smartest guys I've met when it comes to SEO. Yeah, and, and also I would say not not to just. Blow, blow, uh, to, to spend too much time, but like Bill is also so good at SEO is one of those things that's so hard to quantify and it's so hard to like when you're doing SEO projects, he's so good at explaining what he's doing and what the impact is. That's what he's so good at. Yeah, he's done a, he's done a fabulous job at, at Drift for sure. Yeah, so we had him on the show early, which was nice. And like, I feel like since that episode, we, we talk about it every so often because like other guests will have heard that one or people always just look at Drift's approach. So when you came to Privy, obviously different product, different industry and different a lot of differences. Was one of the first things that you thought about when you sat down to build out your plan or how you were going to work? Were you like, okay, we're going to, we need to dive deeper on brand or let's try and replicate some of these. Do you have, did you have like playbooks from what you did previously? Like what was the... What was the first kind of starting point? And then we can use that to then go into what you've been doing over the last six months that's yeah. helped you grow so aggressively there. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, just any marketer, right? Dave and I are no different. When you've seen things that work like in your career and what works, you can apply it to the most most business models in most industries. And the nice thing about Privy joining Privy this year was that the, the size and the scale of the business was roughly the size a little bit bigger, but roughly the size of when I joined Drift in 2017 and I first started working with Dave and we built out the marketing team and, and there was a bunch of things that we went through and problems that we had to solve. And a lot of the, honestly, a lot of the really fun stuff of the early stage company uh, that we saw that we were like, this would be, these would be great plays to run at, at Privy as well. One example would be, we wrote a book at Drift called This Won't Scale and it just it came out of, we were doing a webinar once and, and we just started talking about it. I'm like, wait a minute, like we should be writing a book about all these unscalable tactics we have because these are like the secrets to, to some of the drift marketing success. And, and so we actually just finished writing a book at Privy. Uh, it's a little bit different. The book play, like a physical book, I'm not talking about an ebook, a physical book is a amazing play. It also fits so nicely with our audience because it's e-commerce. And so we've actually now, what I've been doing the last couple of weeks is like, I'm building a little e-commerce business within our marketing team. Like we build a Shopify account. I'm working with this company, ShipBob, that handles fulfillment. Like we're actually doing this stuff that our customers are doing. We're going to obviously run Privy and all the plays that we want to help grow the list and, and send emails and stuff. Like we're doing all of those things that our customers are doing. So it's been this really amazing perspective. So yeah, a hundred percent, like we've been doing um, some of the plays that we run at Drift, but you're also like, it's a different business. It's a different model. It's a different type of customer. Drift was moving upstream to enterprise. Now they're doing a lot more enterprise sales. Privy, we're very focused on small e-commerce brands. That's who we're. That's who we've always been for, and so we're going to continue to focus on. So there are definitely differences, but yeah, of course, there's definitely some plays that we've pulled out from past experience and, and applied here at Privy. Was that a shift for you guys? Because I'm trying to think for Privy. I I know that I think you guys went through like a website adjustment or like relaunch or something not too yeah. long ago. I'm trying yeah. to think back to what it was like previously, but I don't remember, um, not that I go on the site that much, like it's not my kind of realm, but I don't remember there being as much of a, in the messaging, like a heavy focus on for helping small brands online. So was that like one of the more yeah. recent? hundred yeah. percent. You've done your homework, Dylan. The background here, that's great. Uh, yeah, no, a hundred percent. Like we, we were not, I think one of the um, adjustments we made has had the biggest impact this year is we've really doubled down on our message and made it, I think, a lot more clear that we are for small e-commerce brands. In fact, I think the biggest font, the biggest header on our entire website and it's on our homepage is, I think it says, we help small e-commerce brands grow online. 
that is our job. That's our mission. So we've not only have we positioned ourselves closer to, hey, we're, you know, uh, for Shopify merchants, because that's our massive market. And that's what we want to focus. But we've also doubled down, like we're for Shopify merchants that are small. And you'll see some of the new positioning we have. We have a launch coming up in a couple of weeks. A lot of the messaging, and I think this is some in some places already across the site, is we're really helping small e-commerce brands grow from zero to a million in sales. That's where we focus. So if you're between zero and a million and you have a Shopify store, you should come check us out because we're going to help you grow your email list, send your marketing email, and sell more online. And, and that's basically the, the offering. And yeah, 100%, we've been focusing on that in my market. Mm-hmm. And so doubling down on that, I'm assuming that has helped you with the the rest of the marketing that you do, because then you have, when you have that clearer messaging, you know who the target audience is, even though you're not saying you didn't know them before, but it's like even more specific. So then you create the content and the other bits and pieces for them specifically. So let's talk about that. When we get to this, this simple strategy that you guys have implemented, that's helped really increase traffic like for, for anyone listening that's still wondering like oh what is that maybe you could there's a lot of things obviously as that go into growing organic traffic and there's many things we've many approaches and, and many that are um that all of you are hopefully doing content marketing seo demand gen paid stuff like that i think the the one of the the simple strategy that i'm referencing is we've done a ton of launches this year and as i said earlier my job is i run the brand and the product marketing team at privy and product marketing obviously does a lot of launches. In fact, at Adrift, I think I did, I, I counted, I did like 60 something launches while we were there. We did launch every single month. Uh, and I've done some launches before that and everything. And so the launch playbook and the framework of doing a launch is obviously um, something I'm very familiar with. In fact, I just launched um, my own course on product launches a couple of weeks ago. So we've, so basically in growing the brand this year, one of the tactics we've used, and it's pretty simple, right, is, is launches. And it's not just for product, it's also brand stuff. I'll give you some examples. So we started this year and we built, and we started a podcast. Obviously, Dave's background, he's done a ton of, of podcasts. I don't know if you call it podcast marketing. He's done tons of, of podcasts and he's really good at it. He's a really good interviewer. And so we knew a podcast could be a staple and also helps us with our content. We could create more content out of those podcast episodes, things we learned. So we started a podcast. Had a big launch around that, drove a lot of momentum, got a lot of people signed up. And then we followed up with that sense. And, and we've had, I think we've had an episode every single week, basically. And now we're even doing a daily podcast episode with our CEO. And that was one podcast launch. We also launched a Privy Masterclass, which is our online training series. We get people into that. And then we continue momentum. The thing with launches is that it's, they're designed and the way they work is you drive a lot of attention in a short time frame towards a, a specific thing. You get the whole company, the brand, the, the selling, the success, all focused on this one thing in the short term. Maybe it's 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever. But the strategy we've used is that we've gone out and we've just launched a bunch of stuff and taken a lot of short-term bets. When COVID hit, we launched this thing called shopsmallecom.com and shop small, shop small e-commerce.com. Basically, we're all about small e-commerce brands we realized there was an opportunity to help support our customers in this time of COVID, in a time of everybody's ordering everything online, basically this explosion of, of e-commerce. We realized we could help by building a marketplace for these small e-commerce brands, specifically our customers. And so we did that. It was, it was one of these, what I would call short-term, short-term bets. I would say there was a big opportunity to help our customers. It's also a great brand exercise to go out there and like build a marketplace and potentially have a hub where people are shopping for online. And we had 2,500 stores sign up for that marketplace within the first 48 hours of just announcing it. And so we had a launch, we designed that, we went on social, we told a compelling story. We, it wasn't crazy, much crazier than a really good story and then using the right channels, email, social, uh, the website to, to drive people into it. All of this to say, we've had a couple other launches. Like I said before, we, we, we launched a book this year. Um, we're actually, it launches in a couple of weeks. We announced a couple of weeks ago. All this to say is that this tactic of figuring out these short-term bets and launches around on these brand bets um, have really helped us accelerate our, our growth this year for organic traffic. And, and the other part of it is just that it's not just about launching something and then moving on. We've actually, everything we've launched this year, I would say there's probably about seven or eight different things that are big things that we've launched. We had to have a plan to continue momentum after that, to continue to drive. Our podcast has, I think, 80,000 downloads for the year at this point, which is great. We've had a really big growth and we follow that up. The Privy Masterclass, I don't know, we've got tens of thousands of people probably sign up for that at this point. Like I said, Shop Small e had 2,500 stores sign up for that right away. So the approach has been launch something, build momentum, and then continue to feed those new brand you know, plays. And that's actually worked for us really well this year. 
That's awesome. Do you get, do you ever get, I don't know if this is a term or if I'm just making it up, a launch burnout kind of thing? Do you ever, do you ever, <laughs> it's like if you're consistently, because yeah. that's one thing that you guys have clearly been very good at everywhere that you've been at like launches, but at yeah. volume too. Because it's, it's great to do, some people might do one or two launches a year or something, yeah. whereas you guys are like pushing it more frequently. So I have a couple of questions. Like one is how do you, does it even come into things or how do you avoid it? And then the second one is you were talking about continuing on that momentum after you do the launches, because like a lot of the time the launches are more like short term plays mm-hmm. and short term. So I do want to dive a bit deeper into like, how you continue that because i think that's probably going to be something that people are listening to this if i keep doing these launches so frequently like how do i fought, like how do i once someone's registered for the master classes or they've downloaded the or purchased the book or had it shipped to them or whatever what do we do with those people next because i think that's an area where probably most often when someone does get really like aggressive over timelines for launching they do this big launch they'll put so much effort into that and then once it's done it's done and what, what do yeah. they do next i know that's like yeah. two questions in one but I, that's what i would yeah. spend more time talking about so launch burnout definitely exists and i've definitely felt it both on the sort of personal level of it's a lot of work and a lot of organizing leading up to a launch and you always have to like take a breath after and figure out what the next thing is and and, and so there's that side of it i think from an external audience standpoint, I haven't really done it. I haven't gotten to the point where I feel like we've burnt out our audiences externally, not at Privy. I think we've done that well. I think depending on the, like the business model, like we're again, small e-commerce brands, we're SMB. We have a, a 14 day trial. You can sign up for Privy. You can get started with a Privy paid plan for $13 a month. So like it's, it, so for that audience where it's very you know transactional and we don't have annual plans it's all monthly, it, it actually makes sense to go out there and do that often. When you have a longer sales cycle, when you have bigger deal, like for enterprise, I just I think it's probably a little bit different. And I think we struggle with that a little bit at Drift to try to figure out with launches, how do we use that and, and basically weaponize these launches to help our sales team close these bigger accounts. So I think that don't have a the right playbook for enterprise launches necessarily yet but but yeah launch burnout definitely exists for the external audience i think for some group probably more enterprise than, than others um and then in terms of building momentum yeah that's a, it's a great question i think like the other thing is like when i talk about like small brand bet or yeah like small short-term brand bets sometimes those bets don't pay off right like sometimes you don't continue momentum shop small ecom was a great launch it helped our customers but it was really topical at the time and it didn't really sustain itself. And so we don't, we aren't investing that much into it now. That was a bet, like, it was great. I know we helped drive a lot of business for our customers, which is really what we cared about at the end of the day. It wasn't about getting new trialers. I don't even think people that signed up, I don't think we ever marketed to them. I don't think we ever told them necessarily about Privy and our products and stuff. I think like it was mostly about going out there and helping them. And, and, and that was enough for us. And of course, like getting our brand out there was great, but they don't always work out. These, these bets don't always work out. And so I think it's also about, okay, this isn't something that we can maintain we can you know, continue to do. So let's take a you know step back. Let's go to the next project. Let's, let's you know, sunset this one or, or whatever the approach is. Sometimes that's what you just have to do with, with some of these bets. Yeah. And when you're planning, like when you're planning these launches, these product launches that you do, how much do you think about, and this might, so some people listening, this might seem like a bit of a stupid question, but I think with you, it makes sense. Like how much do you think about the objectives and like the results that you're aiming for and how much you're like, we just know, like, because I feel like from listening to you guys' content and watching you guys, like I know that a lot of what you do will probably just be like, okay, we know that we know the value of brand and we just have a feeling that this is going like, yeah. to Obviously, I know yeah. as a wider team, there's always people, regardless of how the team feel, there's always people that are asking about, okay, you, we need to do this forecast planning for this project or this or that. Like, How do you think about that when you're first, when you're yeah. first coming up with what it is? Yeah, I use a framework and this is why I launched this it's it's really designed around product launches, but I launched this course, the product launch masterclass.com. I launched that and that really teaches like this framework. And it's really about the system to like developing a launch, like coming up with a goal, why you have that goal, building the right activities around that goal. Um, also talks about positioning and stuff like that. Like that, the whole intention that is specifically to your question. Cause like, this is what something that a lot of product marketers struggle with. Like, what is my goal? How do I see my goal? My best answer is like for a product launch in particular, you really shouldn't be designing a, a launch unless you actually have a company strategic goal that you're trying to tackle. So if you're launching a mobile app, what is behind the scenes? What is the reason for that? Well, it turns out our customers use, use our product in the field. 
we need a mobile app so they can use it. They don't have to try to get on their computer to log blah, blah, blah later. Really that like the launch goal should be something that's thought of beforehand. And then the entire launch is, is designed around that. I like to say that a launch goal isn't, is really like the short term reality. If we think about launches, there's like this 48 hour window, maybe where if you're building all this momentum and you're focusing all this attention on this one thing, your whole company is basically focusing their attention on this one thing. What is that one thing? What is the result you want in that 48 hours? And that's really the launch goal. So it might be like, Hey, we're going to try to drive 50 sales demos in the first 48 hours. No, that's not going to hit your company's strategic goal. If you do that, it's going to lead to this larger thing. So let's go back to the mobile, the mobile device example. Like if you're launching a mobile app and your launch goal should be something like, we're going to get 50 people to, you know, download the mobile app in the first 48 hours with the launch. That's obviously helping you going to lead to growing to 2000 downloads over the course of the year or 5,000 or whatever it is, which you know is going to help you with churn or whatever the, the strategic goal is you're trying to do. I, yes. So the answer to your question, yes, I do have a framework. That's what, that's the reason I uh, actually launched that course. I think with brand, it's a little bit different. Obviously that's product specific. With brand, it's a little bit different. It's probably a little bit more like what you talked about on the Ray Gun episode with, with Nick was like, you got to have, like, when it comes to attribution, you got to kind of balance like intuition and knowing this is going to pay off. And then also like looking at the data, right? Like we have the, look at the title of this, this episode, 50% growth in organic traffic. That's the outcome we want. And it wasn't that we set originally 50% at the beginning of this year. And said, that's what we need, 50% growth. Um, but we know the stuff that we've been doing over the course of the year, obviously we've been tracking stuff like organic uh, traffic growth over the course of the year. And we know that if we're making these brand bets, we know that's contributing to that 50% number. That's that sort of intuition mixed with data. And it's like, all right, that those are the right things. Plus, I think also a lot of times when you launch these things, like you're going to see tweets, you're going to see email replies. Like we, I think one of the things that we do really well is we share a lot of that stuff internally. Hey, here's what people are saying, good or bad. Sometimes it's, it's bad stuff, but a lot of it is just like clear to us. Oh man, people are listening. Like we're seeing a lot more email replies about podcast episodes and email them out. Clearly people are picking it up. We're hearing from our sales team. Oh, they're talking. People are referencing, oh, I heard about you guys on your podcast. Like those things keep start coming up more and more to us. And it's like, all right, clearly we're doing the right thing here. We don't need to necessarily do the full analysis to say, hey, this pot, you know, 20% of our podcast episodes have converted to a trial or, or people that listen to our, you know, uh, podcast have converted to a trial. We don't, we're not at that point yet. I would love to get closer to that. I think over the course of the next 10 years in digital marketing, we'll get closer to, to stronger attribution for smaller businesses like ours that move really fast. But we basically, we're, it's a mixture of that gut, you know, feeling of, okay, this is clearly working and then using supporting data like traffic or other things to, to kind of come to a thesis. Okay, this is working. We should double down on this. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And I think it's just a, it's super clear too that if anyone listening to this or, or watching this wants to get a bit more access to like you and your framework, they should definitely check out that um, course that you have. So it's the product launch masterclass.com. Do you feel as we start to begin wrapping up this episode, like I have a couple more questions for you. Do, do you feel that SaaS companies in general don't focus heavily enough on product launches because I, I i or just launches in general because of course there's when people first get started there's always like the the product hunt launch route that everyone goes down and then as their product tends to evolve a lot of the time the kind of product update or product launch is just like a message to the email list of hey we introduced this new feature or there's like a push in app yeah. of hey this is something new this month like how, yeah. how do you think about that do you think that it should always be, well, not always, I'm sure it depends on the new features or the new products or launches, et cetera. But how do you see that? Is that something that you yeah. clearly try and push more, uh, right? I I, yeah, I think more often than not, looking at companies across the, the SaaS uh, space, more often than not, they should be launching more stuff. Like, I, I think there are some businesses that are probably like, it doesn't make a ton of sense. And, and again, there are areas like enterprise and I don't know, maybe things like cybersecurity or data science, like maybe there's some stuff there that's harder, but I think more often than not that your team should be doing more launches. And I think your product, I think the place to invest your product marketing team is, is launches, but I think it's also the, the strategy behind those launches and trying to tie them back into your company. If you're a CMO and you've got a, a team and, and you're sitting in management meetings and we're talking, and you're talking about the, the, hopefully you have big strategic goals for the year or for the quarter or whatever. The first thing when I'm a CMO, the first thing I'm going to be thinking about is, hey, this, tra this company strategic goal. Okay, what are we building in product? I'm going to go talk to my VP of product. What are we building in product? What's coming in there? Okay, great. Let's get product marketing invested in that early and let's figure out how we can help with this launch 
drive towards that strategic goal because ultimately that everyone talks about product marketing should be more strategic and tactical. That's where you be more strategic, right? Like you, you go and you figure out what are the company goals, the, the goals that are keeping your CEO up at night or the, the things your management team keeps talking about, partnering with the product team and figuring out, you know, how you can launch things to actually help and attribute to that company strategic goal. Yes, I think definitely companies should be thinking more about product launches. I think a really good product marketing leader or team has a lot of product launch experience. And I think like, and what I'm doing now here at Privy, which is interesting, is like I'm taking all that experience I had when I was running product marketing and Drift and, and all the launches I did, and I'm taking that experience and applying it to the brand side. And that's been really super successful for us doing these launches and being, I, I don't think it's a hundred percent match for everyone, the exact playbook. We do a lot of stuff on social. We built, we spent many of us on the team, including Ben, Dave, myself, and others, spend a lot of time on, on LinkedIn and Twitter, like building our audience on an e, like I'm building my e my e-commerce audience has grown drastically, basically zero to whatever it is now on Twitter or LinkedIn, whatever, just from being in there talking about privy, talking about the problems, right? Like just building that audience because what happens ultimately is like when you start actually launching stuff that's solving that problem, if you've been talking about that problem for months and now you're just launching something that actually solves it, you've already built an audience of people that are care about that problem and now you have the solution, right? So I think if you can be, if you're, you know, leading a marketing team or, or maybe you're not, but and you're just on a marketing team, if you can be thinking about that kind of stuff and, and how to use launches to, to drive company strategic goals, how to build an audience on, on social media and be able to launch stuff to them, those are the kind of things that I think can help you get to 50% growth in, in organic traffic over a six month window. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing with us some of the ways that you guys like think about things and do things. I really appreciate it. I think that I, I think a lot of people listening to this will be definitely interested to see what that framework and that playbook looks like. So I would definitely encourage them to check out the product launch masterclass that you have. It looks great. And then of course, if anyone listening to this wants to learn a bit more about Privy and, and see what you guys do, it's pretty easy to find you guys now. Um, but I think we'll, we'll like, we'll wrap up there. I think this has been really useful, really enjoyable for me too. It's the first time we've had a guest on talking about launches specifically, which is great because I feel like it's an area of marketing that is clearly so powerful, but for some reason, especially in the SaaS world, doesn't really get talked about too often. It's like the natural yeah. thing is always, oh, we're talking about SEO and content strategies yeah. and then paid yeah. ads and then like maybe some affiliate stuff. And then rarely do people venture outside of that enough for yeah. like real results. So that's yeah, why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I want to change that and be able to talk about this and hopefully share. That's, that's the great thing about marketing right now too, is that people are sharing now more than ever. Marketers are sharing like what's working and, and, and the behind the scenes stuff on LinkedIn, on Twitter, in, in blogs, everywhere, for like on podcasts. So that's, it's, it's great to be able to come on here and actually talk about this stuff. And, and definitely, yeah, if anyone's interested, check out the product launch masterclass.com. Also feel free to hit me up on LinkedIn and Twitter, ask me a question. Happy to, happy to answer it. Awesome. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Dylan. 